Welcome to the show, Mick here, hello. Today I'm gonna to be swapping out the pickups and the wiring loom in my much loved Gibson Memphis 1958 ES335. Now don't panic, it's not actually a 1958 guitar, uh, that's just the name of the model. Regular viewers will be aware that I've done a bunch of pickup swaps on this channel to varying levels of success. The strats have been about splitting hairs, chasing a muse that perhaps I never really found. Uh, until I actually bought a proper old Strat. In fact, two old Strats. That's a story for another day. Also did an Epiphone Casino and a Gretsch G5422 Electromatic. And I think they were much more successful in terms of transforming those guitars into something that I liked less, into something I liked much more. Which brings me to the 335. Now, again, regular viewers might argue that of all the guitars we have here on that pedal show, this one is somewhere near the bottom of the Needs New Pickups list. They are Memphis Historic Spec, or Memphis Historical Spec, I'm not quite sure, MHS humbuckers that were original with the guitar, and absolutely no doubt, you can dial this in with pretty much any amp and pedal to sound utterly fabulous. However, if we've learned one thing all these years of doing that pedal show to this point, it's that there are no absolutes when it comes to guitar tone, and I would say there's no objectivity either. As soon as you involve humans, it's always contextual, and it is always subjective. Now, my context is my rig and my normal guitars, which for the most part is Strats. Bit more airy, bit more bouncy, we'll use all these adjectives. Uh, in that company, the 335 sometimes can be a bit lackluster. And I don't think it's just about single coils versus humbuckers. Reason I say that is my other main guitar is a very lovely Murphy aged gold top Les Paul. And I'll use that alongside the Strat at gigs, and I have done uh, for the last, I don't know, seven or eight gigs I've done with no problem at all. Don't need to change anything else on the amp. And there brings the dilemma, because as I said earlier, this guitar can sound fantastic, but compared with some of the vintage ones I've played, and indeed some of the newer ones, it definitely does lack a bit of air and sparkle, particularly when the controls are turned down. The obvious question then is, why not just turn up the presence and the treble on the amp? Well, yes, you can do that, but I think it's more complex. I think there's something intrinsic in and of the guitar itself, the way it's balanced in itself, that enables it to speak in a certain way. I don't know, something to do with resonant peaks, the way it handles harmonics, the way it works under volume, all that stuff, which you could probably measure scientifically, but where that always falls down for me is, you stick that same guitar in the hands of two players and it will sound vastly different. You know, at a gig I can take my Strat, my Collings Junior, not all at once maybe, but uh, <laughs> the Les Paul, PRS DGT, the Casino, even one of Dan's tellies. I don't have to change anything on the amp or the pedals. That guitar is going to sit and sing nicely in a way that I enjoy it. So with apologies for that lengthy explanation before we've even done anything, <laughs> I think it's really important to state that about context. The nature of things now is that we're always looking for better or best or comparing this to be better or worse or whatever than that. The fact is, that's fooey. It's literally what works for you, what do you prefer in your context. Now for me that might mean better, for you it might mean worse or vice versa. Objectively, it's just different. It's all subjective, like all aspects of guitar tone. Anyway, finally then, and much more prosaically, I have chosen these. Lola, regular viewers will know I'm a fan of Lola pickups. Mmm, Imperial Low Wines, aged, don't you know, because you have to do that. Um, the reason I've chosen those is because I've heard them in loads and loads and loads of guitars, and I've always liked them. Also, people I know, friends who I trust, uh, people whose sort of tone goals are aligned with mine, they like them. So among the sea of Goodness knows how many amazing pickups out there. I think these are a pretty safe bet. No doubt many of the other boutique makers would be just as suitable for this guitar, but I'm going this way. And as mentioned earlier, the wiring harness, full wiring harness from Monty's. Um, on their advice, I've gone with the 0.015 microfarad capacitor on the neck, which apparently means it's a bit clearer sounding when you turn it down. 
and a 0 0.022 microfarad on the bridge, which is sort of standard vintage Gibson spec, 500K pots. Um, yeah. Why am I changing the loom? Well, uh, two reasons predominantly. The volume pots have gone a bit scratchy in the 335, so I could just replace them. But to be honest, there's a bit more interest going on here. When I did the casino uh, pickup swap ages ago, I'm pretty sure the new loom played a significant part in the uh, improvement in sound of that guitar. So at long, 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 long last, welcome to that pedal show. Let's get on with it. Right then, observances. Um, it's at this point, there's a significant part of me going, why on earth am I changing anything about this guitar? I've just done the first round of playing uh, with the old pickups and the old loom. And uh, some of the sounds are just like, man, I totally remember why I got this guitar. That said, uh, having done the audio and had a quick listen back so far, um, yeah, some of those, some of that sparkle on the clean sounds particularly isn't there. So I don't know, let's proceed. When you're doing anything like this, don't do what I do because I usually cut loads of corners, but it's a good idea to have something soft on the table. Um, thank you to Universal Audio for the blanket. <laughs> um, I've got the neck supported just so that we can get to everything we need in the guitar. Um, and all your tools and stuff that you need, just think it through before you start and have everything to hand. So the first job to do is this pit guard's gonna have to come off because unfortunately, everything's gotta come out through here. When we replace it, we're gonna have a switch, four pots and the jack. And they've all gotta come out through there, be rewired on and go back in. <laughs> Hooray. People have got different um, ways of getting uh, knobs off uh, shafts, as it were. Um, I use teaspoons. Um, you should put something under the guitar to protect the finish, but as long as you're very careful, one under each side, equal pressure, off it comes. Um, it's a really, really good idea to have a little pot to put all your knobs and screws and all that kind of stuff in, which I'll find in a second, so they can go over there. Um, as I say, the pit guard, they can be a pain, these things, but let's do it anyway. Be interesting to see if the finish is the same color underneath the pit guard. Surprise, surprise, it is. It's not that old. Uh, right, screws, pit guard. On a 335, relocating the pots isn't that much hassle because you can kind of reach that one, you can reach the switch. Yeah, actually it is a hassle. So I learned this from TV Jones when we did the Gretsch Electromatic pickup refit. And you can buy this aquarium tubing stuff. I got this from maybe B&Q or somewhere like that, like a English hardware store. And it's aquarium tubing and it fits with a brilliant tolerance fit right over the end of the of the shaft of the pot. There you go. That means when you take the old loom out, you can thread this through the through the holes, out through the F holes, and then use it to guide the new pots back in. You'll see that in due course. I also made up this little jack lead so it will with no um cover on the jack thing it will go all the way through and you can pull it back through to get the jack out so let's do all of that and see where we get to pot for screws and things and very handily available at that pedal show store.com don't you know so you can all go in there you can all go in there um yeah, wow, that's gonna be a struggle. On a completely hollow guitar, which like a complete idiot I didn't do on the casino, you can get it all out through the pickup um, cavity 
but of course this has a solid section running all the way down to the middle so you can't do that right um yeah let's just go let's just go You'll notice that some of this stuff's only just finger tight because um, I've never tightened it up. So some of them are, some of them will require spannering. I like to spanner. So because it's all attached together, that should all just come out through there now. He said should. I've done a, a, an Epiphone a dot, I've done, the casino, I've never done a 335. Oh, yes I have. Did one on Guitarist Magazine for my friend Owen years ago. Um, all right then. My dear friend Neville tells me that at Gibson they had various bits of shaped wire and so forth uh, to help locate and do all of this. He worked there in Rotterdam for years, many years ago. Dentists implements can often be useful. So let's see, are you gonna come out then? Flipping great long switch on it. Maybe that was standard for the time. Oh goody, the pots have little uh, bite washers on them as well, so there's every chance if a pot turns upside down that's going to be lost inside the guitar. That's quite the squeeze to come out through there. So this is a challenge. Um, just getting the orientation correct to get the, the pot out through the the f-hole because it's quite a small f-hole and it's at this point you're obviously in damage of uh, you're in danger of damaging the top of your guitar so I'm trying to try and be careful not to do that I'm gonna to have to get some advice. It might be Revelation O'Clock. I just Googled it, went through a bunch of videos and uh, with thanks to the guitaristas and Matt at Monty's, apparently you can go through the bridge pickup cavity. I've seen it done on a couple of Epiphones, not sure about Gibson, so uh, off come these strings then. If this is true, I don't want the bridge posts to move, so I'm just going to tape them so they can't move. When I went to Gibson many years ago, uh, Memphis, and it was the inspiration for buying this guitar, actually, um, I was watching the 59 uh, 335 and the 63 335, which are the two model designations they did at that time. 63 being the block neck one with... Um, uh, like Clapton's era 64 kind of thing and the other one being dot neck 59 type and what I noticed on the on the central cavity route central um, block route sorry was that the 63 has an extra little hole in it and I'm wondering if that's what this hole is going to be or not be to be or not to be let's check our focus Close enough for rock and roll. Right, what are we gonna find in here then? No. You cannot, there is no hole. I don't know if you can see that. Well, I'm gonna tell you there is no hole. There is no way of putting it through the bridge pickup cavity, so you can go back in. If that is what that little thing is there, four on a 63, then 
then now we know. <laughs> that would make that would make sense. I've never been able to work it out before, but that may well be why it's there. Answers below. Uh, no, no real surprises there. So we're back to f trying to fish it out through the flipping hole then. Hmm. I'm. I really am not sure if the new. Literally half an hour later. That was the most frustrating bit of guitar maintenance I have ever had to do in my life to date. Um, as you can see, I started fearing for the top as I was getting more um, annoyed, so I just taped it up there a bit. Uh, let's have a look what we've got then. I'm not very knowledgeable about guitar wiring, truth be told. I'd always assumed it to be 50s wired. Um, but it looks very different than than the uh, the Monty's loom soldering iron. Then it's going to be flipping modern solder, isn't it? Ooh. Or is it? No, it's not. I don't think. Oh, and it's not that hot. Obviously the danger here is that you heat the iron up, flick a bit of solder onto the top of the guitar and uh, mark it forevermore. Especially when you're losing patience because something's not going right. That is the point to stop. Okay. Uh, old wiring loom. You may get used for other things. Be ashamed to let those lovely capacitors go to waste. You'd make a nice earring if you were very fashionable. What I like about this, everything's marked so you can see what's what and where stuff needs to be attached. So the bridge pickup we know is the, is the room. It comes in there, attaches there and it goes onto that lug there. Similarly, the neck pickup will come in. Um, there's a bit of solder under there, so we put the, the wrap on there and the hot wire straight through. Probably a good time to do a DC resistance uh, reading, wouldn't it? Right, bridge. 7.98, 8K. Neck, 7.4. Uh, important to say that DC resistance really isn't the be all and end all of um, pickup output, but people like to know, so that's what they were. This then. So it's going to be orientated like so. Okay, I think I've done that right. Now we just need to check if it's working before I try and get it all back in the guitar. Bright, dull, no volume, volume. <laughs> Neck, uh, bridge. Touch a pull piece, that might help. Dull, bright. Volume, middle, happy days. Okay, we're working. What I'm going to do now is thread the uh, necessary items through the requisite holes. So, the missing washers. My dad had a brain hemorrhage once. In fact, he had two. Uh, one of which they operated on. Thing explodes inside your head and starts bleeding. And somebody very clever saws a, uh, cuts a big thing down the side of your face, drills a hole in through your head, goes in and puts a metal clamp on it. I can't even get some washers out of a guitar. Uh, right, 
Jack's Ocket. Uh, I mean, I've got to be honest, the hassle of getting these flipping things out of there, how on earth? I just, yeah, well. If you're screaming at the screen at this point, I don't blame you. I am too, metaphorically. Be free. So obviously now I've got to be so careful not to break any of the wiring as I'm trying to get it all back in there. Okay, so right, you be free. Uh, I wonder if we've overcomplicated this right from the beginning. Perhaps we have, because the tubing is now causing me all kinds of spatial awareness issues. So let's get the tubing separate from the from all the guff. George, this is for you. I hope your wiring is robust, mate, because I've got flipping sausage fingers here. And then that could, that could go in. That is the... See, the thing is, it's not even the tubing that's causing the problem here. It's the fact that the, the pot just won't go in there. Because Matt does the, um, the ground wire around the back of the pot, so it's, it's too fat to slip in there. I think... Try it on. And what I'm in real danger of now is kind of manipulating it in ways it doesn't want to go. Um, I'm gonna have to break again. I don't. I just don't know how to do this. Okay, 20 minutes later. Is at this point I should stop, uh, pack the whole thing up, send it off to. Matt and, and or somebody and just say, I can't do this because what's happening is I've just spent 20 minutes getting one pot in through the hole there. And as such, I'm stressing all the wiring. Um, and I can't see the harness surviving that amount of manipulation to get it into the, into the guitar. So I'm making a decision. I am gonna swap the pickups out because there's absolutely no way it's all gonna go in all going to come out again and then go back in again. That's just not going to happen. So I'm going to wire the new pickups in straight away. Uh, so unfortunately, we won't get to hear the harness on its own because I just can't do it. It's as simple as that. Um, it's quarter to five. It's Friday afternoon. I'm so angry I could smash the thing to bits. Uh, so I'm going to stop short of that. Back soon. Cool. So what we have here is the beginnings of a disaster unfolding. <laughs> um, I've unsoldered the bridge pickup. Let's see if it comes out without too much trouble. And I will, I'll just reiterate that this is the point where you should stop because the annoyance um, sets in and that's when you start to make compound errors, things get damaged, etc., etc., etc. My problem is I'm on an extremely tight deadline. We've got a hell of a week next week, um, not to mention an experience day on Friday. so. If this doesn't get done, it will go in the case and it won't come out for a year. And that's just how that goes. And I don't really want that. Right, ah, there is the aforementioned um, earth wire then. I think, I don't know if you can see that just inside the cavity there, there's another wire attached. So I'll detach that and hope that it doesn't disappear inside the guitar because um, then there will be shouting much swearing and furious anger to quote Samuel L. Jackson. Is that ever going to come off there? No serious burns yet. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. You can shut up. Much anger is emanating from me. Right, let's see then. Let's see what 
the DC meter says. 6.88 for the neck and 7.6 something for the bridge. Can't remember what the other ones were, but that'll do. Has a little plastic cover on it, which we shall removalize. Nice. Very nice. So, Jason, Lola, are your pickup screws the same as Gibson's? Yes, they are. It may come as a surprise. I've never actually had a baby. And yet, it being the most painful thing imaginable, probably, one uh, then chooses to do it again. As you can see, that goes in there, the wire goes down through there. So you can come out through there, which means you can be, I am the world's biggest idiot. Of course, what I've just done is put the, uh, put the neck pickup in, haven't I? What a rubber, Johnny. I'm going to repeat this for the neck pickup, and then I'm going to curl up into a ball and cry. Okay, uh, quite a long time has passed. I've got the pickups in. You can see there. Uh, and wired on. I've managed to get all that back in. I am really worried about the um, the integrity of the wiring because I just I just can't see it lasting all the manhandling it's taken to get in there. And the other problem I've got I've got the tubing on the far tone pot and the jack socket, but actually getting any more tubing in there to attach to any more pots is proving to be extremely difficult because it's all a big jumbly mess in there. So um, I'm going to just do a bit more and then, uh, you know, it's kind of home time. And I, I just, I've got a horrible feeling it's all going to get packed up in a box and shipped off to a guitar repairer because uh, I think I've, I think I've stuffed it up basically, which is um, really, really annoying. Not least it's taken me two days so far this vlog has taken me two days so far and it's just i just can't afford to waste this kind of time doing stuff that has no outcome uh let that be a lesson to anyone who's interested in having a lesson why do i do what i do to me i wish i knew what it is, is what it is. <coughs> you total b Okay, well that's the end of that then. Um, unfortunately, I've managed to get stuff poking through, but the combination of the lock washers underneath and the locator dials and the nuts, there isn't enough thread from the pot sticking through to get any purchase to tighten it up. So um, that's the end of that. Um, the pots aren't long enough <laughs> to go through the holes. And that's not, it's not user error, right? It's definitely not user error at this point. The pots 
are not long enough to go through the damn holes and uh, and tighten up. So there we go. It's going to get packed up. Oh, and there goes my thing. It's going to get packed up, put in the case, sent to Matt, uh, and they can sort it out. Goodbye. Right then, much hilarity. Next day, Saturday, I've come home. I've got two ideas. Guitar, dog. Say hello, Rosie. I know, I'm in your light, aren't I? Good girl. So my idea is thusly, one, um, completely start again with the wiring loom uh, using salvageable bits from uh, the various, so use the pots that will fit, use the whatever, anyway. That is worst case scenario. Best case scenario will be, I'm just gonna take the little bite washers off underneath and hopefully that will be somewhere between one and two millimeters enough to stick enough threads through for the pots to work. That is gonna be task number one. Please, 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 please let this work. <laughs> hear the sound of broken hearts in there. There they are, the sound of broken hearts. Look at you taunting me. Look at you. Coming in as a great surprise to absolutely nobody anywhere. Tweezers are my new best friend. Because now, sorry for the, I mean, it is absolutely glorious to see the sunshine, but uh, it doesn't make for optimum lighting conditions. Oh well. So, you know, much like the aforementioned dentist quote, you can actually get in here and retrieve the things you need to retrieve. Okay. What do you think? Is this crazy? Some sort of affirmation? And this is helping how? How is this helping? To my great surprise and delight, this method is working. I'm fishing it out, fishing the pots out with a mixture of dentist tools, tweezers, and pliers. And slowly but surely, things are starting to emerge through holes. If the wiring has survived, I will be astounded. Unbelievably, this has occurred. It's all in there and it sort of feels like we're dealing with lottery odds at this point so um, Blues Junior okay I'll turn the master up and there's no massive humming so that's good neck pickup dull loud middle Bridge. I don't believe it. It's done. Right then, sounds. I'm going to try to put some order on this so we can kind of hear things back to back. Here come the disclaimers. Um, there's quite a bit of time that will pass between playing the thing, changing something, and then coming back to play it. So I'll do my level best to play as close to the same thing as I can. And also I'll make a note of all the settings and everything. So everything will be exactly the same. We'll make it clear on screen what you're listening to. Second disclaimer is, um, I don't know about you, but I find if I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm trying to play, I can't listen. <laughs> so um, it might be that things aren't exactly the same and I might go off on a tangent here and then. And if I do, forgive me. Um, but anyway, Okay, the first sound will be some open chords and I'll do that on the bridge, the neck and the middle pickup positions.
the second sound, let's bring the controls into play. I want to hear what the volume and tone controls are doing between the two guitars. So we'll go on to the neck pickup, we'll select a light overdrive sound, I'll play some stuff. Um, first of all, I will turn the uh, volume down to six, then I'll turn it back up again, and then I'll turn the tone down to six, and then down to two, and then I'll turn it back up again. My God, this is complicated. <laughs> The third sound will be a mix of both pickups. Uh, Clapton was a fan of this, albeit with an overdriven sound. So you go into the middle um, position and you put the bridge pickup on maximum and you dial the neck pickup back to nine or eight, something like that. Um, again, we'll go back to our kind of, our cleanest sound, even though it's not clean with apologies. Um, so here we go then. For uh, things and giggles, here it is with both up to 10 and I'll put the neck down to 8 and you'll be able to hear that. fourth sound is going to be the bridge pickup, flat out, everything on 10 with plenty of gain. And I associate this with the kind of um, Larry Ford, Robin Carlton kind of sound, if you will, take your pick. Uh, it's that Dumbly thing that I love so much. With a bit of 335 millisecond delay, partway through the playing, I will turn the volume down about halfway just to see what kind of cleanup we've got um, with this much gain. <laughs> Thank you. 
Final sound is a take on Clapton's woman tone. Uh, people argue about which pickup it is. I'm going to use the neck pickup and I'm going to turn the tone all the way off. I'm going to use um, a treble booster type pedal into a load of overdrive. Um, and obviously here we're trying to hear the, the relative sort of mid vocal frequency of what happens when you turn that tone pot all the way down, given that in the new loom, there's going to be a different capacitor. Too much information. Here's the noise. Thank <laughs> you. 
Blimey O'Reilly. Uh, what are we to make of that then, amid the gentle barking of a distant Labrador? Um, it was an enormous amount of effort for a pretty small change, wasn't it, really? Um, that said, despite the comment you will often hear on YouTube gear videos, you'll never hear it in a mix, um, I actually thought I could hear the differences more clearly in the track than uh, in the just free playing examples. Some of you will discern no difference whatsoever. Others will think it's night and day, and surprisingly enough, I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, motivated cognition aside, that is to say, clearly my ego wants the original hypothesis to be true. I think I'm happy. I think I'm happy. I think there has been a slight reduction in bloat. I think there's slight more vocal upper mids. And, you know, just about, I think it's worth it. I think it does bode well for my original hopes that the guitar will sit alongside my Strat, the Les Paul, uh, and my Collings Jr. Maybe even an SG, but don't tell anyone. Um, without having to change things on the amps and pedals. So that seems to be the case. But I guess the real test is going to be in the coming months when we really get to understand what's going on using it in the show week in, week out, and uh, also doing a few gigs. It's probably worth saying that variances in my own playing might just outweigh the differences in the pickups themselves, I don't know. It certainly would be the case that in the hands of different players, the guitar would sound vastly different. Tones all in the fingers, well, can you hear that? No, me neither. It's clearly all the factors, isn't it? It's the ecosystem of you, the guitar, the amp, the pedals, and all of that. And it is also worth saying that some judicious EQ and careful choice of pedals um, could get all the difference, most of the difference, I don't know, a good deal of the difference that we were hearing in the guitars. That's a question for another day. To close then, and to make us all feel a bit better about the immense amount of time lost during this endeavour, <laughs> let's turn to some wise words. William Blake crops up quite frequently on that pedal show uh, in the form of the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom, which is to say you've got to go there to come back. You've got to scratch the itch. Um, but you've also got to know when to stop scratching when it starts bleeding and gets infected. <laughs> Perhaps much better and a more fulsome philosophical view on life in general would be that awesome bit of graffiti that we think originates in Oxford and has been attributed to some of the world's great minds. To do is to be, Plato. To be is to do, Aristotle. Doobie dooby doo, Frank Sinatra. And I'm off to blimmin' well dooby dooby doing something much less stressful than this. I bid you adieu. Cheerio.